Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and in this episode of the Archive we're compiling all information we know on the Mac cannons and coil guns of the UNSC Navy. That includes the Series 8 Super Mac used on the Infinity class supercarrier, the Super Macs used on various ship platforms and orbital defence platforms, the Onaga class coil guns and mass drivers, and the various coil gun based point defence guns of the UNSC. Much of the concept artwork used in this video is provided with the courtesy of the Sins of the Prophets mod, link is in the description. And additional lore information is provided by Halopedia, Halo Warfleet, the Halo Encyclopedia, and various Halo-based novels, Halo The Fall of Reach and Halo First Strike being chief among them. So let's open this archive and look at the deep information regarding the UNSC's big guns. Infinity's primary armament is four 27-meter bore CR-03 Series 8 magnetic accelerator cannons capable of firing various sub-caliber rounds, cargo packages, and autonomous kill vehicles with specialized payloads. This is already insane proportions for a gun, and to top it off, it's considered more powerful than the orbital defense platform's Super Mac cannons. The ODP Super Mac fires a 3,000 ton ferric tungsten slug at 4% the speed of light delivering a synonymous amount of energy to 52 gigatons of TNT, approximately the same as detonating 1,000 SAR bombers, the biggest nuclear weapon ever detonated here on Earth, at the same time. The bore of the Super Mac looks a little less than 2 meters. The quoted bore from the Series 8 is 27 meters, making it around 10 times larger. On top of this, a single ultra-dense round fired from one of these Macs made a crater 7 miles across on San Helios. Now there are two ways we can find estimates on the destructive power of the Infinity Series 8 Macs, given that there isn't much information other than what I've just said about the Infinity's Macs in the lore. One way is with the exact quoted law and extrapolating information based on what we already know of Mac platforms, and the other is based on the observational evidence. I'm going to opt to do both, and we can look at the specs of each and decide which is more likely, and if we can't decide, an average of the two. So given that the Series 8 bore diameter is 27 meters according to the law, and on the assumption that it fires at approximately the same velocity as the Supermax being 4% the speed of light, or 12 million meters per second, we need to roughly calculate the projectile's mass. The round fired from the Supermax is a 3,000 ton ferric tungsten slug measuring approximately 1.5 meters in diameter, and given a 4.3 to 1 diameter to length ratio for the rounds found in the Cairo station, 6.45 meters in length. If we now assume the Infinity's max uses the same material just scaled up, giving us a round that is 27 meters in diameter and 116 meters in length, that gives us a volume of 66,473 meters cubed. Now we need to know the density of ferric tungsten. 7,870 kilograms per meter cubed for iron and 19,300 kilograms per meters cubed for tungsten giving an average of 11,430 kilograms per meters cubed, assuming an even 50-50 alloy that makes a mass of 759,786,390 kilograms, or a little over 759,000 metric tons. 79,000 tons traveling at 4% the speed of light equals 54 quadrillion megajoules of energy, approximately 12,906 gigatons of TNT, otherwise known as 12.9 teratons. This is so massive I can't even substantiate the destructive power, but it puts it somewhere in the order of 253 times more powerful than the orbital defense platform's Super Mac. This is so massive, we need to put this through an impact calculator to find out the crater size before we reverse calculate the crater we have on Sanghelios. 
The crater was said to be seven miles across. It's difficult to say with exact certainty because there are factors like atmospheric thickness and pressure, the type of rock at the impact site, the exact composition of the projectile in question, but using a clever little program online that calculates the impact effects of a given asteroid on Earth, we can enter in the basic information of our projectile and find out what kind of impact crater this would produce. We have to make some adjustments, however, because the calculator only takes into consideration the diameter of the projectile and its density, so we need to convert the assumed projectile volume or mass into an appropriate spherical analogue. A sphere with the volume of 66,473 meters cubed would have a diameter of 50.26 meters. If we put this into our impact calculator with a density of 11,430 kilograms per meters cubed and an impact velocity of 12,000 kilometers per second and assume the infinity fired its back from directly above being 90 degrees to the impact site, that would create a crater 27.6 miles or 44.4 kilometers across. This, of course, is four times larger than the claimed size of the crater caused by the Infinity's Mac round on San Helios. So we can rule out the claimed size of the Series 8 Max as a viable way to predict its energy and destructive capability, and instead revert to using the observational evidence that we can then reverse calculate and find out the type of impact that would create a crater seven miles across. From that, we get a sphere that is 15 meters in diameter with a volume of 1,767 meters cubed, giving it a mass of 20,196 metric tons, traveling at 4% the speed of light. From that, we do our calculations for kinetic energy and we get 1.4 quadrillion megajoules, or 347,959 megatons, or a quite reasonable 347 gigatons, much less than the ridiculous 12.9 teratons that we got from the previous calculation. However, there is more. We can also use the physical dimensions of the sphere, including its volume, to reverse calculate the size of the projectile in question within a tolerable margin for error. It is quoted that the Infinity Series 8 Max fire subcaliber rounds, so they don't have to stick to the 27 meter bore and can go significantly smaller. If we use the cylinder's volume as 1,767 meters cubed and stick as close to our 4.3 to 1 ratio between projectile diameter and length, the closest we get is a projectile that is 8.08 meters in diameter and 34.4 meters in length. So from this we can now ascertain some specifics about the Series 8 Mach cannons on the Infinity. Each of Infinity's four Series 8 Machs has a 27 meter bore, from which it fires sub-caliber 20,000 metric ton ferric tungsten rounds measuring 8.08 meters in diameter and 34.4 meters in length fired at 4% the speed of light impacting with the force of 347 gigatons or the equivalent of getting struck by 6.8 Super Mac cannons from an orbital defense platform simultaneously. With little more information regarding the particulars of the Series 8 Max, that's as close as we're going to get at this time to law accurate information. The Super Mac fires a 3,000 ton projectile at 4% the speed of light. This is a great place to start because not only do we have a velocity, but we also have a mass. And from these two numbers, we can work out the kinetic energy involved. However, we also have to bear in mind that the velocities we're dealing with are relativistic speeds. And as such, we will need to do relativistic kinetic energy calculations. The reason being is because the closer an object approaches the speed of light, the more mass it gains. It's an interesting relationship between relativity and mass and is governed broadly by the famous E equals mc squared equation and more specifically by the Lorentz equations. So given these equations, if we then put in the 3000 ton projectile that the Supermax fire, we get 219,425,927,318,694 megajoules. That is an insanely large amount of energy. If we then convert that from megajoules through to gigatons of TNT, we get 52.44 gigatons worth of TNT. 
It's now relatively easy to understand how a supermac can gut a Covenant ship, shielded or not, from stem to stern. Now it is claimed in the Halo Encyclopedia however that the velocity of the supermac is actually closer to 50% the speed of light, thus resulting in a significantly larger yield. However, the source in the reissue of the Fall of Reach still says 4%, and since this is a more recent and more consistent source, we will accept 4% as being the true figure until proven otherwise. While we're on the Fall of Reach, it is also quoted in this book that the supermac can actually destroy two Covenant capital ships outright and severely damage a third. This is interesting because we can use this to extrapolate some further details regarding Covenant ships. So if we take the 52 gigaton yield and divide this by 2.5 assuming the two ships destroyed and one damaged, we arrive at around about 21 gigatons, give or take. If we then apply this number to one of the smaller Covenant capital ships being the CCS class battlecruiser, then that suggests that in order to kill a single CCS class battlecruiser you need approximately 21 gigatons of TNT. This is interesting information to have because not only does it clarify what it takes to kill a CCS class battlecruiser, it can also be used as a backward calculation to find out the yields of other Mach cannon systems. The frigates, for example, have a projectile that weighs 600 tons. We have no specific information regarding the Mac cannons of cruiser size vessels, other than it takes three shots to kill a CCS class battlecruiser. From this, that means that we have to infer the weight of the projectile now, considering that the frigate is a 600 ton projectile and the Super Mac is a 3000 ton projectile. If we estimated it somewhere in the middle, around about 1400 tons, that makes the cruiser's rounds about twice as massive as the frigate rounds and the Supermac cannon rounds about twice as massive as the cruiser rounds. Now that we have an estimated weight for the cruiser Mac cannon rounds, and we know it takes three cruiser rounds to take down a CCS class battlecruiser, and we know that it takes 21 gigatons in order to kill a CCS class battlecruiser, we can simply divide that 21 gigatons by the three shots. It gives us a yield of the cruiser born Mac cannons of 7 gigatons. We can then put this back through the kinetic energy calculator with the estimated mass and the yield energy and it gives us a velocity of 2.14% the speed of light. Now this is interesting because we know that both the frigates and the cruisers fire their Mach cannons at roughly the same velocity. So we now know a velocity for the frigate max and we know that they are 600 tons in mass. From this we can then calculate the yield of the frigate Mach cannons which is 2.96 gigatons, but let's round up to around 3 just to be friendly. While there is an array of Onager platforms on the UNSC Infinity in the form of the Mark 2551 Onager, there is precious little lore on the velocities, densities or energies involved in the firing of this weapon. With the earlier Mark 2488 however, we do have some established lore on its stats. Specifically, it is quoted in Halo The Essential Visual Guide that the 2488 Onager is capable of firing a 15cm ferric tungsten slug with up to 1.1 gigajoules of kinetic energy. This is great because we have a round size, a round material and the kinetic energy. We need to establish the round's mass and then we can use this with the established kinetic energy to calculate the velocity with some rather simple assumptions. If we assume the round in question is a solid 15cm diameter cylinder, as denoted by the term slug, being a solid ballistic projectile, that gets us started. We need to also know the round's length, and we can estimate this by looking at the ratio of diameter to length of known projectiles. One of the most common rounds in use both in real life and in the UNSC is the 762 by 51 NATO round. The actual bullet projectile of this round measures 7.62mm in diameter if you ignore the jacket and 33.3mm in length, giving a ratio of 4.37 to 1. If we round down to say 4.3 to 1 we can estimate the Onager's projectile to be around 64.5cm in length, given its diameter of 15cm. The round material is said to be a ferric tungsten, basically meaning an alloy of iron and tungsten. 
The metal consists of anywhere between 70 and 82% of tungsten, so again if we estimate 75% tungsten and 25% iron we can now estimate the mass of the projectile. A cylinder of tungsten with an estimated diameter of 15 centimeters and a length of 64.5 centimeters would have a mass of 193.7 kilograms. However, only 75% of the projectile is tungsten, so if we subtract 25%, that equals 145.2 kilograms. The same projectile in iron would equal 81.7 kilograms. However, only 25% of the projectile is iron, so again if we calculate that to be 20.4 kilograms by taking away 75%. Now if we add these two resulting factors together, we get a ferric tungsten projectile that measures 15 centimeters in diameter, 64.5 centimeters in length with a mass of 165.6 kilograms. The projectile has the kinetic energy of 1.1 gigajoules. We can reverse calculate the velocity from the mass and kinetic energy and what we get is 3644.8 meters per second or around 8153 miles per hour or 13121 kilometers per hour or quite simply Mach 10.6 making this projectile hypersonic and more destructive than 6000 50 cal BMGs being fired simultaneously now we have this information we can use it as our base level stats to look at the other coil guns on the UNSC vessels. And we start that with the M870 Rampart. This is a point defence weapon system utilised by warships of the UNSC, typically as part of a shipwide defence network. Each 870 gun or rampart is a fully automated hull based turret emplacement typically consisting of a barrel of twin or quad mounted 50mm rapid fire core guns and a targeting scanner. Point defence guns such as these are used for the engagement of incoming threats including the warding off of strike craft and the disruption of plasma torpedoes. Each emplacement actively switches between subcaliber armor piercing sabots or proximity detonation fragmentation shells based on threat analysis of its current target in order to maximize effectiveness. M870s are most commonly mounted on frigates including the Caron class light frigates, Stawart class light frigates and Strident class heavy frigates. However, they are also utilized on Gladius class heavy corvettes, Halberd class destroyers and even the Epoch class heavy carrier, making them a relatively common fixture across the entirety of the UNSC fleet. If we use our base level stats of the Onaga as a reference point, we can make some conservative assumptions on the rampart. A 50mm projectile translates to 215mm in length given our 4.3 to 1 ratio for projectile dimensions. Though the material of the projectiles vary due to its two different projectile types, the proximity detonation fragmentation cells can be somewhat ruled out if we want to know the kinetic energy, leaving only the subcaliber armor piercing sabots. Subcaliber means that the diameter of the projectile is less than the bore of the weapon. Similar rounds have a ratio between the bore diameter and the penetrator of 4.8 to 1. One example is the much larger M829 a3 discarding sabot round that has a penetrated diameter of 25mm but is fired from a 120mm barrel. That makes the penetrator of the rampart around 10.4mm in diameter and will assume the same 215mm length due to the gun being a coil gun and thus no need for a shell or propellant. The UNSC make heavy use of ferric tungsten in their projectiles so we will assume the same material is used as with the Onager. That gives us a projectile mass of 247.2 grams. If we assume a similar muzzle velocity of around 3500 meters per second, since this is argued as the ideal muzzle velocity for kinetic energy penetrators, we get a kinetic energy of 1514.1 kilojoules or 116 50 cal BMGs. Which is scary in and of itself, but when you consider that the rampart can be a quad mounted arrangement with rapid fire capabilities, it gets to insane levels of destructive capability super quick. Most frustratingly, after this point, lore and information regarding the remaining naval coil guns is sparse, to the point that it's even lacking calibre, velocity, 
projectile properties and practically all other variables to be able to be used to implement reasonable calculations on the specifics of the gun power and operation. Nevertheless, in the interests of being inclusive, this is all the information I could find on the remaining naval guns. The M910 Rampart Point Defence Network is a point defence system utilised by the UNSC Navy on its warships and they're primarily used to shoot down fighters and missiles. The UNSC Pillar of Autumn was actually equipped with 18 of these guns and the Autumn Class Heavy Cruiser is equipped with 6 of these guns. It's a bit curious that the upgraded newer version of the Autumn which was actually directly based off of the original Pillar of Autumn only has 6 when the original had 18 but I digress. These double stack ramparts fire 50mm high explosive rounds, making its destructive capability a little more difficult to calculate because we don't know the, the properties and statistics of the explosive package within the rounds, or even get close to inferring it alongside the different materials the round itself could be made of, but it's reasonable to assume that since this is a later version of the M870 rampart, it's more destructive. Next in line is the 11A2R1 deck gun. In 2520, the Phoenix-class colony ship UNSC Spirit of Fire was outfitted with 10 such weapons. During the Human Covenant War in 2531, these weapons were often used to provide orbital fire support for the ship's crew. During the Battle of Entran Harborage, these cannons were used to defend against a Covenant CPV-class heavy destroyer, as well as numerous Spirit dropships and their badge escorts, while the ship's Marine and Spartan complement fended off borders and repaired the drive corps. The guns are quad barreled however the bore is difficult to estimate and on top of this the exact projectile, whether it's sub-calibre or not, is almost impossible to ascertain. As such, until more information is available on the specifics of these guns, very little can be inferred aside from the obvious aesthetics. The Mark 55 Castor Naval Coil Gun is a large naval autocannon used by the UNSC Navy after the Human Covenant War. It is capable of being loaded with a variety of specialised ammunition including experimental shield piercing shells. The Strident class heavy frigate has five of these turrets, three of which being paired with two Mark 57 Arena Point Defence guns in a quick shot configuration. Again, with little more than aesthetics and no specified calibres, muzzle velocity or otherwise, very little can be inferred about this gun. The M66 Sentry was mounted on the Epoch class heavy carrier and Autumn class heavy cruiser. The UNSC Pillar of Autumn was also retrofitted with them in preparation for Operation Red Flag. We know basically nothing more than that about the M66. The Mark 33 Spitfire is armed with two rapid fire naval call guns for offence. After its refit for Operation Red Flag, the UNSC Pillar of Autumn was equipped with eight of these turrets. The Mark 40 Spitfire is a refinement of the older Mark 33, featuring a higher muzzle velocity, improved tracking speed and better accuracy than its predecessors. Unfortunately, we have no information on the specs of the predecessor or this newer version of the platform, so we can make no extrapolations on the specifics of this gun. The gun mount is apparently several tons lighter thanks to it being armoured with a new formulation of the Titanium A armour while still maintaining the same level of protection. The Autumn class heavy cruiser sports four of these coil gun batteries to complement its Mac. The Mark 15 breakwater coil gun appears to be the largest coil gun battery used on UNSC ships before of course making the transition over to Mac platforms. Its massive three barrel arrangement invokes images of the 16 inch Mark 7 United States naval gun used up until the turn of the 21st century, and in absence of the Mac platforms on the ship could be considered its main guns. Aside from this gun being obviously massive and likely extraordinarily powerful, precious little information is actually known about this battery. A shame to be sure because I would have really enjoyed calculating the properties of this gun at length, but alas there is still time for this information to come to light from lore in the near future. One can only hope. Thanks for watching, stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members Neek the Silent Cartographer, Siphonic Storm and Todd Morrison, my Tier Zero Transcendients. Brian, Sebastian, Darian, Red Sea, Stork of the Realms, Falcon X003, Starlight, Alvin, Flaming Halo, Josh, Legions Lost, Kyle, Cat Erdekam, Schneidish, Leon, Ignizzle, Chris, Cooper, Prophet, and Devon, the holders of the mantle, my glorious reclaimers, my loyal Metarchs.
and all the other patrons and YouTube members that have jumped aboard to support the channel. Much love to you guys, thanks so much for your support, it's keeping things happening and helping development of the channel and future awesomeness in a big way. If you like Halo or Disgust to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there, or jumping on as a channel member. It means the world to me and affords you loads of great perks and bonuses while also helping work towards some awesome stuff in the near and distant future. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.